All right, so I'm going to be showing you how to open up and disassemble this Asus Asus ROG Zephyrus G15. This is model GA503R. Uh, the full model number is GA503RM-G15.R93060. Right, so first thing we're going to do is use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. You want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down on my desk in the pattern I remove them like this. All right, so we got four going along here. Looks like we got one here and here. We might have to remove these little pieces here. There might be hidden screws under these three things. And then we got four more screws down here. So I'm going to have to see if we can pop those little pieces out. To do that, you might have to use either a little flathead screwdriver or a small pin or needle. Okay, um, you can also use like a tiny razor blade, whatever works that helps you get that out. All right, so we're going to continue removing all these screws and then I'm going to see if I can remove those. It looks like the fans are pretty dusty, so we are going to have to clean that up. All right, the customer told me it stopped turning on after they dropped their backpack with their laptop in it. Um, so it just started booting to a black screen. I'm hoping that it's some loose RAM or something. Um, usually that, there's a good chance that that's the case. Uh, hopefully nothing else. If anything, maybe a loose or pulled out um, LCD LVDS connector. So we'll find out, all right. So we'll continue removing all these screws. All right, so as you can see, this screw actually stays attached to the case and then it allows you to kind of pop this up, all right? So usually what I'll do is I'll pull this up and then I'll slide my fingernail along the gap to kind of pull the hinges up, or not the hinges, the clips up. But uh, it does look like these three are screws. So let's go ahead and get a tool to pop that out, okay? So I have a little tool here. Let's use that, okay? Oh, what is going on outside? helicopter or something flying pretty low to the ground okay so we have this little like metal toothpick kind of thingy so I'm gonna see if I can use that to kind of get around the edges and then pop this up okay so you get around the edge of the thing and then pull this up it seems like this might be a rubber sticker so actually a little flathead screwdriver would actually work well with this but there we go we got that out and you can see there's a screw head in there so we're gonna have to get all three of these out. Okay, there's the paint. And the third one here. All right, there we go. All right, so now we got all three of those out. Let's go ahead and get the other screws out. Okay, so these three, try and keep them separate as well. All right, the screws along these two and the four back here are the longest. It looks like these three are slightly shorter and then the four along the front here are much shorter. So again, make sure to keep the screws in order. You don't wanna mix them up. Again, if you mix them up, you can damage your computer. All right, so here we go. Now that we got all those screws, let's go ahead and continue popping the case apart. So again, I'm just pulling up the cover, sliding my fingernail underneath and you can see it's popping up. All right, we're gonna go along here as well, and there we go. All right, then we're gonna kind of wiggle this, or we can try and go along the back to release those covers as well, or clips, okay? It's being a little tricky there, there we go. All right, carefully flip that, and there we go. All right, you can see it's a little dusty here, but in the fans, there's quite a bit of dust. Okay, so there's a lot of dust in there and a lot of dust in there. So I'm gonna clean this up real quick and I'll be back. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So you can see the dust is all cleaned up from in there. Okay, a lot cleaner. And obviously the fans are also all cleaned out. All right, so there we go. All right, so my hope is that the RAM is the issue. So what we're gonna do Oh, there's some dust on there. We're gonna pop the RAM out. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. RAM is pretty easy to remove. I know somebody's gonna say, why don't you remove the battery first? Let me show you how to remove the battery. So here's the battery connector. You slide this little metal tab up here a little bit, all right? So you need to slide it so it's no longer on top of this uh, gap here. Once you do that, you can actually pull this out. All right, keep in mind that this battery also acts as the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. 
All right, so if you disconnect that, um, it's usually going to take a while to boot back up. All right, battery model number is right there. So if you need a replacement battery, C41N2013, okay? So there's the battery model number. Let's go ahead and pop the battery out, okay? So we got one screw here, one screw here. It looks like four screws, okay? So we'll get these four screws out, one screw down here. The two screws towards the bottom or the front of the opening are shorter. Okay, so keep that in mind. You don't want to mix them up. All right, now that we got that, let's see if we can lift this up. Yes, we can. All right, and there's the battery. Why do I feel like I worked on one of these not too long ago? Um, not the same model. It's different, but yeah, very similar. Okay, I just want to make sure everything is locked in. These connectors look okay. All right, this is the keyboard backlight connector, touchpad, trackpad connector, keyboard connector. Obviously, if you're um, removing them, there's this flip latch here. Wait, why is this one? There you go. Flip that latch up like that, and then you can push, make sure the cable's in. Also, you need to flip that up if you're going to pull the cable out. On this touchpad connector, the flip latch is on the opposite side there, and the cable comes out the opposite end. So keep in mind that the latches, you can see on the, um, the keyboard backlight, the latch is on the opposite side of the cable. It's not always on the same side, okay? So, um, one other thing after disconnecting the battery, it's always a good idea to open up the laptop and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power, all right? This helps um, with draining the capacitors and things like that and makes it a lot safer to work on, especially if you're going to be messing with the LCD LVDS connector. Um, the keyboard is actually pretty dusty, so actually let me clean that up as well before I continue, all right? So it's been pretty much over 15 seconds. So yeah, let me clean that real quick and I'll be back. All right, so cleaned up the keyboard, all right? It's a lot less dusty now. Anyways, let's go ahead and check the RAM. So the RAM is just right here, very easy to access, all right? You pull these two tabs to the side and then it will pop up like that. You can go ahead and wiggle that out. My worry is there might be a stick of RAM underneath on the other side of the motherboard. But if it comes to that point, that's a lot more work to get to. So I'm going to have to let the customer know um, if that's the case, because that's going to make it a lot more pricey for me to completely disassemble the whole thing like that. All right. You got the one fan connector here. Okay. It's a small fan connector. LCD LVDS connector is right here. Okay. So sometimes this comes loose. It might come loose on the other side, the screen side. There's a speaker connector here. The speakers aren't held in with screws. They're just held in place with these little rubber things. So you can just pull it up. Um, it is a little bit difficult to pull up, so don't expect it to just pop out. Also, the wire's trapped under here, so you do need to pull that out of the way to lift up the speaker. All right, you got this little connector here. I'm not sure uh, what this is for. It might just be to detect when the screen opens or closes. And also the speaker has a wire running along the bottom to the other speaker here. All right. You got the wireless card here. It does look to be removable. Um, and if you want to see how to remove it, um, I have other videos showing that. But you go from the tail and you lift that up. All right. You also have another M.2 SSD slot down here. Okay. Most likely PCIe NVMe SSD as well. All right. And you got this little connector here for the power button so there's a flip latch um, but yeah we're gonna go ahead and leave that in place all right so lock that back down let's go ahead now put the battery back in and see if we're lucky or if we're going to have to take everything completely apart I hope we're not going to have to take everything completely apart but uh we'll see all right so just push that back down into place slide that metal latch back down all right and let's go ahead and put some screws in there just so the battery doesn't fall out while we're trying to power it on. Uh, keep in mind, the speaker doesn't have anything holding it in. So if you flip the computer upside down uh, while the case is off, the speaker is very likely going to fall out. So just be very careful with it that you don't drop um, the speaker and then damage the wiring. Okay. All right. So now that we've got the battery screws back in, let's go ahead and rotate this. We'll open up the screen. We'll push the power button. Let's see. I do see the keyboard lighting up. So that's a good sign. I don't know if it was doing that before or not. Um, again, the battery does act as the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. 
So keep in mind, if you disconnected that, um, there's a good chance it's gonna take a while to boot up. So don't expect it to boot up right away, okay? Um, it is, I do hear the fan coming on. And the caps lock light, as you can see, isn't responding at all. So um, we'll see. Either it's still in the process of starting up or there's something else going on that's not working. It could either possibly be a loose LCD LVDS connector back here, or um, it could be another stick of RAM somewhere on the other side of the board. Um, I'm gonna have to see if it doesn't power up. Okay, you can see it turned itself off. Um, usually when the RAM, or sorry, when you reset the CMOS or BIOS, um, that's normal, so let's see hopefully it's still in the process of starting up and it's not a more major motherboard issue okay so you can see the keyboard is lit up it's actually lit up blue now earlier it was lit up white and then it did go to blue but now it's just permanently on this blue so we'll give it a little bit more time pushing the caps lock again still nothing happens so hopefully it's still there we go it's in the process and yeah, so now it's starting up. We should be good to go. We're gonna let it start up all the way. I need to put the screen out of view just in case it shows the username. Some people don't like when their username is visible in my videos. So I'm gonna try and keep that out of the video. And as you can see, it started up. So we should be good to go. One thing I recommend after um, starting up the computer is to restart one time, okay? If there's any hardware changes or anything like that, we didn't change any hardware, but it's always a good idea to do a restart if anything weird goes on with your computer, just because with Windows, when you shut it down, it does some hybrid sleep thing. Um, it doesn't do a normal shutdown anymore unless you change the setting to disable their fast startup or whatever it's called. So anyways, we did the restart and you can see it's black screen again. We'll just wait a bit here. Okay. some time wow that's a long restart process come on boot up there we go all right he must have disabled the startup sound because usually when these raw computers start up you hear like this <laughs> like i don't know like wind and like blades kind of cutting across but anyways um as you saw it's booting up just fine let me actually wait to show you there you go windows is starting so we should be good to go that's not the actual date and time um, well, actually, I think the date is right, but the time is wrong. I'm pretty sure it's not 11. It's like 4 something right now. So the date and time does get reset when you remove the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. So keep that in mind. All right. Oh, here you go. The speaker's falling out. And the reason I mentioned it earlier is because when I was cleaning it, like dusting it, the speaker was kind of coming out. All right. As you can see, it's still in the process of going to sleep mode. Um, but yeah, all right. Anyways, let's go ahead and get the bottom cover back on. I'm glad we didn't have to take the whole thing apart. Um, it could be some of these connectors might have been loose, but most likely it was the RAM. All right, that's the most common cause of the black screen and nothing coming on after your computer's been like dropped or something. Unless it's been dropped really, really hard, very likely it's the RAM. I mean, he did say he dropped his backpack pretty hard. So anyways, let's go ahead and pop all of this back in. Also, if reseating the RAM doesn't work and you have two slots or two sticks of RAM, you can try just using one stick at a time. Obviously, you wanna make sure to shut down your computer before messing with the RAM. You don't need to disconnect the battery, so don't worry about disconnecting the battery, okay? If you're just messing with the RAM. But if you start messing with other components on the motherboard, then I would recommend disconnecting your battery. All right, on some models, they do make it to where you have to disconnect other stuff before you can even get to the RAM. So very important that if you are disconnecting other things, especially the LCD LVDS connector, those wider connectors with the metal on it, not just the flat ribbon cables, you wanna make sure that you disconnect the battery, open the laptop and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. A lot of people say, I never had to do that. I didn't have to do that which it, if, you, if you're lucky or if you do things right, just pulling things straight back, you'll be okay. Uh, most times you won't damage your computer even if you didn't do the battery drain thing because most people, they just disconnect the battery and then start pulling everything apart. But if you pull the connector, like 
the way the connectors work, there's like pins and it connects like this, okay? So if you pull it like this, usually you're okay. But the thing is sometimes people pull it and they'll go at an angle and you see like if it starts touching pins sideways like that, that's where you get a short and you fry things. So it's always a good idea. Just take those 15 seconds. It doesn't take that long. Just connect the battery. Um, you don't even have to take the battery out of the computer. Just disconnect that connector from the little um, uh, socket or whatever you want to call it on the motherboard. All right. And then uh, make sure hold the power button to drain the residual power. All right. Anyways, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, again, please make sure to like comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing, contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, um, you don't even have to contribute a whole bunch. I don't know what the minimum they let you send, if Venmo or Zelle or whatever, I think it might be a dollar. But even if you were to just send like a penny or five cents, I'll, I'll appreciate it because each view, um, it actually makes me less than a cent. So if you're sending me a cent, you're you're sending me more than any viewer sent that hasn't actually sent anything. All right. And then the other way you can help me out is again if you watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. I also have another channel called It's Been Reviewed and More. So um, if you like watching like review product reviews, random product reviews, um, I do like kind of more detailed product reviews where I read off the packaging and all that stuff that people usually don't go over. So if you like that kind of content, um, please subscribe to that channel and watch those videos as well. Um, I post those on this channel as well, but I'm hoping to kind of merge them all off eventually um, so that they're on their own channel. So the sooner I can get that up and monetized, uh, the sooner I can stop putting them on this channel. All right, anyways, that's pretty much it. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. All right, let's drop this, bye.